Isn't it beautiful to know that the power of Christ, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, is the source of our hope? In Christ alone, my cornerstone. I begin with this question. What is it that you expect out of life? What do you expect? You know, after yesterday, I've stopped expecting that the Iowa Hawkeyes will win. <laughs> and I'm not even going to comment on you Cyclone fans. There's a direct connection between faith and expectation. We're going to talk about that together. Faith creates hope. And hope lives in expectation that God is going to do what God has promised. What do you expect in life? It's directly connected to what you believe about God. So let's pray. Lord God, we come this morning to this place grateful that you promise that where two or three are gathered, you are in our midst knowing that you are here and being reminded by hard-boiled eggs that you are a man, a, a God of your word, that you cannot lie. We thank you for the word of promise. May it create within every heart not only faith to trust, but an expectation of your good to each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe that God is going to do powerful and exciting things through the lives of the people of faith. That's been true since the beginning of this congregation's life. Aptly named Faith Lutheran, those that founded this church stepped out in faith, believing that God would bless what they sought to do in His name. And that every point in this congregation's life, God has delivered. God has been true to his word. God has blessed what the people of faith have sought to do for him. Much of that is done by the power of you who sit in these chairs by your willingness to serve and give and share your faith and love. God continues to do powerful and great things through the people of faith. So we're beginning now this Sunday a two-month focus on building faith and loving people as a part of a focus that began in 2014 with a strategic planning where we basically came before God as people of faith and said, God, what do you want us to do to serve you at this time? What do you want us to do? And that strategic plan gave birth to a focus on inviting all people to faith, a renewed focus on our mission, but on a renewed commitment to, to discipleship, to take faith home with us, building strong households of faith, to building an awareness within that framework of discipleship, a generosity that will give of ourselves to the mission of God through faith so that God will use us to his glory. But it also was this focus that none of us is going to journey alone, that we need relationships, we need each other to continue to do this. And it was fun, wasn't it, to see that group that's going to go to Mexico representing Faith Lutheran. The, God wanted us, and we lifted up the truth that we always want to be a missional church. We want to take our love for Christ beyond the doors of this place into the context of other places in God's world, but also into our daily lives. So that mission continues now as we focus in on building faith and loving people. And in the capital campaign organizational aspect of that, it's not just about money. It's about our faith trusting God to do powerful things through his people. So here's a question for you. 
If I told you that at 2 o'clock today at the Dairy Queen, I'd, build, I'd buy an ice cream cone for every faith member that came and met me at 2 o'clock, would you go? All except Pete Crew. <laughs> a word of promise and a word of faith, if it's desired, propels people into action. Do you get that? A word of promise, and you believe the word of promise that's given, propels the person who believes it into action. So now let's look at Gabriel the angel visiting a virgin girl named Mary, and it's the same way. A word of faith, the young lady trusts God's word, and she acts on what God has said he wants to do in and through her life. And God uses her life to give birth to the Son of God, the Savior of the world. So I want you to know and believe with me that faith Lutheran should be full of hope and expectation because the future is as bright as the promises of God. My mom, God rest her soul, had this plaque in our hallway in her house. It said, the future is as bright as the promises of God. Well, as a boy, you know, you read that and you go, I don't know what that means, but okay, mom, you know. But we understand it now, right? We understand the future is created by what God says is going to happen. And as people of faith, we believe there's reason to live with hope and expectation because God's promised it. And God does not lie. So let's look at the story of, of Angel Gabriel's visit to Mary and let's unpack it as some principles of operation of how God works in the world to accomplish what God wants to do. The first thing I want you to note is when an angel shows up, pay attention. Because God is speaking a word. Okay, And when the word of God, an angel is not the cherub, not chunky-faced like your preacher. An angel is a messenger of God who's coming to deliver the word of God to God's people. And just like in Genesis chapter 1, it says God spoke and creation came to exist. God always uses his word to create the reality of what will unfold. So always pay attention when an angel appears in the story narrative because God's going to do something new. God's going to usher in something significant. God's going to give birth to something great. The second thing I want you to realize is that when the promise of God is spoken, it creates faith in the heart of the hearer. And that that belief stirs up hope and expectation. As Pete said to the kids, God doesn't lie. If God promised it, that settles it. The third thing I want you to realize, I already said it, is this present moment for faith, for you and I as God's people, is pregnant with the presence of God and with the promises of God. And if we don't know the promises of God, that's to our loss because the more we're aware of the promises, the stronger the faith is. That's why we want to be a church that's rooted in the Word. Because the more we understand the Word of God, the more it gives birth to the strength of our faith, and the more we live in expectation, like big eyes. What is God going to do now? Because this moment in the history of faith is pregnant with possibility. And he's calling you to be a part of it. You know, when a mother is pregnant, she begins to feel changes going on in her body. As men, we just got to take our, your word for it, ladies, right? But you begin to feel the changes in your body. Maybe you feel the changes in your womb. And your body begins to prepare to not only nourish and nurture the new life growing within you, but to give the gift of life 
to that new beginning in you so that a whole new identity comes to exist. The church is like that. That we as people of faith are like that. That we begin to sense that something new is stirring in us and our body begins to change and adapt in order to accomplish the gift of life that God has intended uh, to happen through us. So this moment in faith's history is pregnant with the promises of God and the possibilities of what God is going to do. But whose power makes that happen? It's not the Virgin Mary's. It's the Holy Spirit's power that gives birth to that new life. The Holy Spirit, with a miracle touch, enables a young girl who's never known a man to have life in her womb. In the amazing truth, in the plan of how God is at work in our world, God always uses human beings, limited, imperfect human beings, to do God's work. He has no other way. Maybe you've heard this before. Without God, we cannot, and without us, God will not. God has decided that the work that he's going to do in the world is going to use us. So he impregnates us and touches us with the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit and God's Spirit does in and through us things that we could never do on our own. That's why we can live expectant even if what God says is going to happen seems unlikely or illogical. And that's the next point. Impossible is not in God's vocabulary. That's a beautiful truth, isn't it? Impossible is not in God's vocabulary. It's in mine. Further, logic is bewildered by what God says he's going to do. Mary says, Well, how can that be? I'm a virgin. Logic is bewildered by the plan of God because God is supernatural and impossible is not in his vocabulary. But God can do anything. What's interesting, uh, that particular verse that in our reading, I'm not sure how it was translated, but my Bible says nothing is impossible with God. What the literal translation says is no word that God has spoken will be impossible for him to fulfill. You get the difference? Once God says in his word, he's going to do something, he's going to make it happen. No word of God is impossible for God to fulfill. Just like the quote in front of you, there's no word or promise of God that's too good to be true because God can do anything. So in the lesson today, we've got the story of Abraham, who in his old age was told, from you is going to be born the beginning of a nation of people, and I will make my name great through you. And did you pick up the verbiage in that passage from Romans 4? It said, Abraham continued to believe God, even though his body was as good as dead, and his wife's womb was past the age of giving birth, yet God believed this, excuse me, Abraham believed this of God. God was able to do what he had promised. When God speaks a word, my faith believes it. I live in the hope that God is going to do it in us, among us, and through us. And because of that, I live in expectation, in anticipation kind of living on tiptoe, on the edge of my chair. How's God going to do this? How does God want to use me? But he does. He wants to use us. Here's the next point. The fulfillment of God's promise calls people of faith into action. We're not supposed to just sit there on our chair and wait for God to do his thing separate from us. He calls us into action. 
So you remember David, the boy, who went to visit his brothers in the army, and Goliath was challenging God's people. And what did David have to do? David had to go out and face his giant. Faith moves into action, believing that God will help. Or when Peter wanted to walk on the water, seeing Jesus coming to him. And Peter said, Lord, I want to walk on the water. And Jesus said, come. What did Peter have to do? He had to step out of the boat. So I want to ask us, what is that in our lives? What is it that we trust God enough that we got to step out of the comfort in order to experience the supernatural? Because God can do it. More than that, in this faith calling us into action, sometimes when faith moves us in action, the power of God is released as faith steps out. You remember when God's people were going to enter the promised land and the priests were carrying the Ark of the Covenant? When did the Jordan River divide for them? When the priests put their feet into the water. Then the river divided split. We have to step forward in faith expecting that then as we move in faith then the power of God is going to be released among us in us and through us and we will be participants in the supernatural. Or when the ten lepers came to Jesus for healing and Jesus said well go show yourself to the priest. They were healed as they went to the priest. So not only does the word of promise compel us as people of faith into action, but that we move forward in faith expecting that the power of God is going to be released to enable us to accomplish what God has asked us to do as we go. The last thing I want to say is what a thrill it is to be partners with God in the miracle. It's many years ago, I went to a conference in Fort Lauderdale in January. It's a good time to go there. And when I was there, when there was a break in the conference, I went to the beach. And I was about 30 pounds lighter. I had a full head of hair. I looked different. (laughs) But I was in the ocean, and I wanted, you know, this fat Midwest preacher wanted to experience body surfing. So I went out where the waves are coming in, and what do you do? You wait for the wave that's going to come, and you begin to swim like a crazy man, and then you stiffen your body, and the wave carries you to the beach. It's exhilarating. Whose power carried me to the beach? This fat, lumpy, Midwestern pastor. The power of the wave. How thrilling it is when you and I would say, yep, I'm in, God. I'll do it. And then we give ourselves to the task. But the wave of the power of the Spirit carries us forward to where we want to go, to the fulfillment of what God wants to do. What are you expecting? And how is your expectation tied to who God says you are and to what he wants to do in your life. You see, I want you to remember that your life is precious and important to the God who made you. That he not only forgives your sin and graces your life with more than all your brokenness and failures, but that more than that, he calls you like he did to Mary. He says, you found favor with me. And his invitation calls us to respond just like Mary. I'm willing. Let your word happen in my life. I'm willing. I offer you who I am and what I have to accomplish what you want to make happen. Are you praying with Mary? I'm your bondservant. Let your word happen happen in me. Amen.